Okay, 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 okay. I know the title is a little bit clickbaity, but there's a reason to it, I swear. But first, we have to ask, who is Jojo Siwa? Joel, Joani, Joani, Tony? Joni. Joel, Joni. Siwa is a 15 year old girl from Omaha, Nebraska, who gained notoriety from appearing in two seasons of Dance Moms, multiple Nickelodeon shows, one Disney show, and most importantly, and why we're here, her YouTube channel that may or may not be run by Nickelodeon. But more on that later. Now, I don't know about the rest of you, but the first time I saw Jojo Siwa was through the memes. She was the fast talking, high energy girl that people love to give shit for a short period of time. But then once her meme died and she disappeared from the internet zeitgeist, everybody forgot about her including me, and until I saw all of her products in Target. At first, it was just a few products here and there in the toy section, and then she took over a whole aisle of toys, and then her face started appearing on food, and blankets, and pillows, and sheets, and that's when I thought, this is a little weird. So, I decided to do what any normal 20-something year old would do. I obsessively studied a 15-year-old girl to see if there was enough dirt to make a video about her on the internet. So the first thing I did is I went to her channel's back catalog and social blade to see if I can find some sort of weird, unnatural growth in her channel to signify that something sketchy was going on. And, I mean, she went from getting about 500,000 views per video to signing with Nickelodeon and getting just 10 times that. Hey Google, what's 500,000 times 10? Yeah, that works. But that's not necessarily sketchy. I mean, when you sign to an MCN or a big company like that, somebody who looks over you and pays for your stuff to get out there and get reached by people, there's gonna be some growth there. I mean, if HBO sent a contract with me and I got some of that titty dragon money and got some of their marketing, do you know how much this channel would grow? I mean, I only have like 80 subscribers right now, but I could possibly get like fucking 85. But with no evidence of unnatural growth, I had to move on to her content. I thought, okay, well, since I'm seeing her products everywhere, that means she has to be promoting that shit like the Paul brothers do. And that's where all the sketchy shit was happening. So here's the thing. Jojo rarely looks at the camera and says, Buy that merch. Buy that merch. But what she does do is she will structure a whole video around a specific product line or song or show that she's trying to promote. Most of her videos follow a very similar formula. There's loud, obnoxious intro. Explaining what the video is going to be about. Oh, today I'm going to Target or Walmart to get the materials needed for the video. It's time for Target! Finding her own products in Target or Walmart. They got JoJo ready right there. Booyah, booyah, booyah. And then quickly rushing home to finish what she said the video was going to be about and then ending the video while talking about her products. Okay, I think we're good. I think we got everything. Let's go back to my house. Essentially what she's doing is she's showing her young audience what products are available and where to get those products. I mean, she has a whole video that's just talking about how a new food product for hers is now at Walmart. Okay, so the internet's main problem with the Paul brothers is that they aggressively advertise the, their young audience and make their fans feel like they're not important or not cared about or not cool if they don't buy their merch. According to Nerd City, only about 50% of a Jake Paul video is advertising. <sighs> only. <laughs> There's no doubt that what the Paul brothers are doing is just outright wrong. But what Jojo Siwa is doing is way more sneaky and way more harmful. She's packaging her large advertisements as these cutesy, funny vlogs about this 15 year old girl and how she's living the dream and she's sending it to her young fans. So her channel is essentially what G.I. Joe and Transformers were from back in the day. They're just long advertisements. Whether she's talking about tour, a new song that's come out, some new merch, some new products at Target or Walmart, she's constantly advertising to these kids. And if that's not enough to justify the title of this video, then here is a bunch of videos that she's made with the Paul Brothers. Also, she's blonde and loud like the Paul Brothers. <sighs> now, now I could end the video here and make like the 100 people watching this video go, hmm. But is this 15 year old girl really the mastermind behind this huge advertising empire? After reading some of her contract with Nickelodeon, I don't think so. According to Business Wire, back in March of 2017, under the arrangement, Nickelodeon will have the opportunity to work with Siwa on a multi-platform basis, including in consumer products, original programming, social media, live events, and music. 
Two things stuck out to me there, multi-platform and social media. According to this article, Nickelodeon has their fingers all in JoJo Siwa's life. And a quick look at her Twitter kind of proves that. 90% of her tweets are fully capitalized advertisements about her YouTube channel or her tour date or retweets of articles that are about her. Every once in a while you'll come across a non-capitalized tweet that you can clearly tell is Jojo Siwa trying to connect with her fans, but I would not be surprised that Nickelodeon has somebody running her social media for her. And as for her YouTube channel, why wouldn't Nickelodeon want to take advantage of the loosely monitored advertising laws on the site? Now I'm not saying that Jojo is some poor girl trapped by this big corporation. I truly believe that she loves what she's doing, and why wouldn't she? I mean, she's a 15 year old singer and dancer. She's probably enjoying the loads of fame and fans and having her face on all these products and toys and having her face on all these dolls. She probably just doesn't understand that what Nickelodeon has her doing is wrong. And if she does, then she's ignoring it because of the fame. And she's a 15 year old kid, you know, I don't blame her. When you were 15, if somebody handed you your dreams and said, okay, but you have to do this somewhat sketchy stuff, would you turn it down immediately? I don't think I would at 15. I don't know if I would now, honestly. <laughs> so what's the solution? Um, I don't really have one. I kind of just thought this was an interesting topic and wanted to make a video about it and maybe get awareness. I don't think harassment's the right thing to do here because she is just a 15 year old girl and I am very against harassing anybody who's under the age of 18. I guess if, uh, if you're a JoJo Siwa fan, why are you here? You're so far from your side of YouTube. I mean, thanks for watching. But how, did, but how did you get here? Also, realize what she's doing and realize that she's advertising to you just, just an ass ton. Like you can, you can be a fan of somebody and, and like somebody without having to buy all of their merch and without needing to feel like you have to support them constantly. But it is good to support people, just not to an excessive amount. And if you're a parent of somebody who watches Jojo Siwa, maybe monitor what your kids are watching more. I know on the surface, it looks like some loud 15 year old girl that wears bows all the time and does all these crazy things and it seems fine, but look into what your kids are watching. And then, and then finally, last but not least, buy my merch. Buy my merch, buy it, buy my fucking merch. If you don't buy the dopest Adventure Lounge merch, then my fans are legally, and I mean legally, allowed to perform whatever hate crime they want on you. Buy my merch, buy it. I'm just kidding, I don't have merch yet.